Beloved, I want us to start the teaching today, reminding ourselves that our topic remains abundant life in Christ Jesus. Abundant life in Christ Jesus. We've already read our text, which is John chapter 10, verse 10b. I have come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. And 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 2 through 4 which emphasizes that God has given us all things pertaining to life and godliness through the knowledge of God and of his son, Jesus Christ, by his divine power. Oh, all glory be to God. I want to start by emphasizing the word of God, the key of the word, uh, which we've talked about several times. If you go with me to Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 47. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 47. Let's look at it. It says, for it is not a futile thing for you because it is your life. And by this word, you shall prolong your days in the land which you cross over the Jordan to possess. So this was Moses speaking to the children of Israel. Moses gave the children of Israel the key for them to prolong their days, prolong their lives, to live and enjoy what God ordained for them in the promised land. And of course, the parallel of this is what Jesus promised us in John chapter 10, verse 10b. Because the question we've been asking is, what does this abundant life mean? How do we enjoy it? And we have been talking about what it means, a lot about what it means. We are now beginning to go into how we enjoy it. Praise the name of the Lord. So you can see here, God promised the children of Israel that he would take them to the land that was flowing with milk and honey and a land of abundance. The same way Jesus promised us as the parallel that he has come that we may have life and have it how? Abundantly. In that John chapter 10, verse 10b. So God promised the children of Israel that he would take them to the land of abundance, the land flowing with milk and honey. And so Moses here gave the children of Israel the key. And what was that key? It says, it is not a futile thing for you because it is your life. That the word of God is... Your life is life. We say, and by this word, you shall prolong your days in the land which you cross over the Jordan to possess. It is the same today that it is by us knowing the word of God as Jesus Christ has taught, knowing Jesus himself, and what he thought, what he did, that's the way we will enjoy this abundant life. Glory be to God. And so far we have looked at the synoptic gospel, which records what Jesus thought and did. So we can see from here that it's always been about the word. It's always about the word. And Jesus Christ emphasized this in Matthew, this same word, chapter 4, uh, verse 4. Matthew chapter 4, verse 4 that we studied. He said, but he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So the point here is we should take the word very seriously, because that's where we will get this abundant life. Okay, so abundant life, therefore, is by divine power, according to uh, Second Peter chapter 1, 
if we read verses two through four, abundant life is by divine power through the knowledge of God and his son, Jesus Christ. That's the point. So God has put all things in his son, Jesus Christ. God has put all things in his son, Jesus Christ. If we look at John chapter 5, verses 20 through 23, John chapter 5, verses 20 through 23, I'd like us to go there and remind ourselves. John chapter 5, from verse 20, he says, For the Father loves the Son and shows him all things that he himself does, and he will show him greater works than this, that you may marvel. So we're talking about divine power, right? That abundant life is by divine power, the divine power of God through the knowledge of God and his son, Jesus Christ. And God has put everything, this power, this abundant life, everything, God has put all things in his son, Jesus Christ. In John chapter 5, we've not yet gone to John, we are still in Luke, but of course, um, a relevant reference for us to make in the context of this teaching today. So in John chapter 5, verses 20 through 23, here we see in verse 20, Jesus here mentioned the greater works, the power of God, the manifestation of the power of God, the power that does work. So I'll read it again. He said, for the Father loves the Son and shows him all things that he himself does and he will show him greater works than this, that you may marvel. 21, for as the father raises the dead and gives life to them, even so the son gives life to them, even so the son gives life to whom he will. As the father raises the dead and gives life to them, even so the son, Jesus Christ, gives life to whom he will. 22, for the Father judges no one, but has committed all judgment to the Son. The Father judges no one, but has committed all judgment to the Son. 23, that all should honor the Son just as they honor the Father. <laughs> he who does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent him. This was Jesus speaking. Honor the son as you honor the father. Because the father has put everything under the son. Glory be to God. So let me make that assertion again so you can connect. Number one, I have said the importance of the word. Because it is your life. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 47. Deuteronomy chapter 8. If you go there, which was the original portion, uh, a place that Jesus quoted again in Matthew. If you were to go to Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 3. Let's look at that. Deuteronomy 8, I believe, verse 3. Look at it with me. It says, so he humbled you, allowed you to hunger, and fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your father know, that he might make you know that man shall not live by bread alone, but that man lives by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. Is that same scripture in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 3, that Jesus Christ quoted in Matthew chapter 4, verse 4? The, you want abundant life, brothers and sisters. It is by the divine power. And this divine power is all loaded in Christ Jesus. But you're not going to get it if you don't go to the word of God. And where do we find this word of God? The word of God is again in Christ Jesus. 
It is by what Jesus has taught and has spoken as recorded in the scriptures. And so the synoptic gospel, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, provides us all that Jesus has spoken. And then follow through in the scripture, you will then see the examples through the apostles in the Acts and the letters, and also in Revelation, which Jesus, what Jesus has spoken to John the Beloved through by revelation, that is after he has ascended to heaven. Glory be to God. So the word, number one, is everything. It's your life. And this word is also what Jesus himself, whom God has put all power, put everything, has spoken. So we will do ourselves good really exploring what has been written in this synoptic gospel, gospels. We have been reading, um, we've covered Matthew so far, we've covered Mark, now we are in Luke. Today is Luke chapter 7 that we are studying. We'll continue to study a chapter a day. Please take this seriously. So, so far, we have summarized, as you would see, this key headings of what Jesus taught about himself and about life into six headlines. We will come to those six headlines, which is what we're then going to be focusing on and digging deeper. But let's make this point, as I think I've already made, that for us to enjoy abundant life, we have to come to Jesus. That's the summary of that John chapter 5, verses 20 through 23, because the Father has put everything in him. Jesus has power to give life, because the Father has given him the authority. Jesus is the one who judges all things. Because the Father has given him the authority to judge all things. Oh, no wonder the world is running helter skelter. The world is scattered because they don't want to acknowledge their Savior, their Master, and their King. I want to say again, without any iota of doubt nor wavering, Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, is the Savior of humankind, the whole humankind. It does not matter your race. It does not matter your religion, where you are, what you are, what you're doing. You have to come to Jesus Christ. You want to enjoy abundant life, the real life that is by the divine power, that is the power of God. There is no other way than through Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. Beloved brothers and sisters, there are so many uh, uh, um, uh, religion and religious bodies and all manner of uh, doctrines of men today that tries to teach different ways, different things. While that may help you temporarily in this world, it cannot guarantee eternal life, and it cannot give the sustained abundant life. Only Jesus Christ can give the sustained abundant life. In this world and beyond this world, you continue to enjoy that eternal life. God is ordained for you, for me, for all humankind in Jesus' name. And so, brothers and sisters, it is all about knowing Jesus and doing what he did and taught us to do. That's the way to experience the abundant life. To experience the abundant life is all in knowing Jesus and doing what he did and taught us to do. That's the way we experience the abundant life. Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 through 4. The book of Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 through 4. Let's look at that quickly. 
And then we'll come back to the summary of the headlines on what Jesus has taught us then in the Synoptic Gospels. Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 through 4. God, who at various times and in various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets, has in this last day spoken to us by his Son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the worlds. Can you hear that? Oh, no wonder. <laughs> There will continue to be problems and confusion in the world, brothers and sisters, because only in Jesus Christ, the one that said, my peace, I live with you. My peace, I give unto you, not as the world give it, give I. He said, in the world, you will have tribulation, but in me, you will have peace. He said, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. Glory be to God. So God in various times and in various ways, spoke in the past to the fathers. In all times, God spoke to the fathers by the prophets. So the prophets will speak a little here, a little there, but not the total counsel of God. They spoke what the Spirit quickened them, helped them to speak. As human beings filled with the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God spoke through them. So a little here, a little there. Some people still want to take us back today to live by the law, the law of Moses. <laughs> uh, whereas God has moved humankind to this present uh, uh, dispensation, which is the dispensation of the Son of God, his son, Jesus Christ. And his son has brought all that together to teach us the way of the law in order for us to have abundant life. So here, the Bible says to us, yes, the prophet spoke. What the prophet spoke by the spirit, yes, they are good. However, all that has to be brought into context of the present dispensation, the dispensation of the Son of God, Jesus Christ. Because now God has spoken to us by his Son. And this his Son, he has appointed heir of all things. Just the point I made before. All things that you need in life has been packaged in Jesus Christ. God has packaged in Jesus Christ, through whom also he made the walls. He made the walls. Note, the walls there are in plural, walls. So what are these walls that he is talking about? If you want to understand this, look at Philippians chapter 2 from verse 9 to 11. The Bible says God has highly exalted him and has given him a name above all names that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of those in heaven, of those on earth, of those beneath the earth. These are the walls the scripture is talking about here. Through whom, through Jesus, God made the walls, the walls above us called the firmament, the heavens, the heavens above us, the earth that we are dwelling in and beneath the earth. What is beneath the earth? Hell. Verse 3, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power. He upholds all things by the word of his power. When he had by himself pushed our sins, sat down, oh, majestically, I wish I could stand up to demonstrate, but you won't see my image well. <laughs> After he has by himself pushed our sins, sat down at the right hand of majesty on high, having become so much better than the angels, as he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. Beloved brothers and sisters, God has put everything in Christ Jesus. 
The omnipotent power of God is in Christ Jesus. And so when we say divine power of God, we are talking about that omnipotent power by which Jesus did everything that he did while he was here on earth. And he is still continuing to do them today. So abundant life is by divine power, his divine power, God's divine power through the knowledge of God and his son, Jesus Christ. And God has put all things in his son, Jesus Christ. So we have to listen to what his son, the son of God, Jesus Christ, has taught and has said we should do. As recorded in the Synoptic Gospels and corroborated by the Acts of Apostles, which is the example and demonstration of this divine power in the first apostles or disciples of the first century, if we put it that way, and the letters, which extends it to the experience of others and also provides the guidance and teaching of the apostles for us to live by and the revelation, as I've already mentioned. So we have summarized this in six headlines, as I mentioned. Number one headline that Jesus has taught and the scripture has confirmed is who is Jesus Christ? Who is Jesus Christ? So please note these six headlines down because this is what you will explore as we continue to study the synoptic gospels. And you have to take time and study this and understand it for yourself. Who is Jesus Christ as taught by him and the scriptures? Who is Jesus Christ as taught by him and the scriptures. You know, when you want to study things deeper, it's good for you to put down some questions. So this is the key question for us to look at here. What are the implications of who he is? That's who Jesus is and his various names to a Christian. That is one who has come to Jesus. What are the implications of who he is and his various names to a Christian in order to enjoy abundant life. Write that down. So number one we have said is, who is Jesus Christ? As taught by him in the Synoptic Gospels and other scriptures. Key question to ask is, what are the implications of, of who he is and his various names? What are the implications of who he is and his various names to a Christian in order to enjoy abundant life. Number two, number two headline is social issues. Social issues and solutions as taught by Jesus Christ. There are a number of social issues that Jesus addressed and the solutions. Take for example, marriage and divorce. Jesus addressed those areas and the other scriptures. And there are a number of things, social issues. We can uh, list uh, so many of them. Today, there are all manner of social issues. Um, Newtness has taken over the whole world. In fact, if uh, an advertisement does not show a naked uh, body, it is no more attractive. Newtness. So the world is really going out of place. No wonder there are so many issues. Uh, corruption has taken over the society. The love of money has taken over the heart of men. So many things with Jesus himself prophesied that they will come to be. But as a Christian, what are we supposed to do? in this present day. Jesus addressed many of such. So social issues and solutions as taught by Jesus Christ. Number three is daily living as a Christian. Your service, your duties and practices. Service, duties and practices. As your daily living, our daily living as a Christian, our service, duties and practices. Number four 
is wisdom for living. Wisdom for living. Looking at challenges, uncertainties, managing relationship, conflicts, handling enemies, different things, different situations in life. That's number four. Number five is the divine power, the divine power, the greater works that we have read about. How do we possess, live and manifest these greater works? These greater works that Jesus did and has commanded us to do also, as is recorded in the book of John chapter 14, verse 12, we read last time, also in the book of Mark chapter 16, verses 17, uh, 18 or oh, an 18 or and all the way down to 20. Then number six is leadership model of Jesus Christ. Leadership, Jesus taught us leadership model. For example, he said, the one, he said, I am in your midst. You call me Lord and master. He said, but I am, yes, indeed, I am your Lord, I'm your master. But I am the one who serves. So Jesus taught the leadership model. Oh, just imagine if all our leaders were like Jesus Christ, what would the world have been like? No, but the world does not want to be like Jesus Christ. But Jesus is the savior of all humankind. Beloved brothers and sisters, for you and I, who have been privileged to hear this word of God. We have the word of God with us. It is now left for you to make your choice. Would you live by this word? Would you live by this life that has been given to you? According to the scripture in Deuteronomy chapter 32 that, I, that we read, it says, it is your life. 32 verse 47, it is your life. Will you take time and dig into the scripture and discover for yourself in these headlines what Jesus has taught and has commanded us to do? I want to conclude by again emphasizing to you that abundant life is by his divine power through the knowledge of God and his son, Jesus Christ. And that God has put everything, all things in his son, Jesus Christ. And so he that has the son of God has life. According to 1 John chapter 5, verse 11. He that has the son of God has life. If you want this abundant life, come to Jesus Christ. And painstakingly listen to what he has taught, what he has done, and what he has commanded us to do. If we do the same, we will enjoy God's abundant life. For indeed, the divine power will manifest in us. Thank you, God Almighty. Bless you. Let us pray. You have heard this word. What are you desiring? Where are you? in this journey of following Jesus totally, following Jesus with your whole heart, following Jesus with your whole life. Where are you? Let us pray. Go ahead and heal yourself to him and tell him, Lord Jesus, I have decided to follow you. Everything has been put in you. The Father has given you all authority, all power. Everything is in you. Jesus, I've decided to follow you. Now help me, reveal yourself to me. Pray, that's prayer point number one. Reveal yourself to me. I've decided to follow you. Prayer point number two, tell him again, Lord Jesus, I give my life to you. Now give me the divine power, the divine power. Abundant life is by your divine power, God Almighty. And this power is in your son, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Walk your divine power, your divine walk in me and through me. 
let there be a manifestation of your divine power in me. Now, pray specifically for those your desires and plan, those great plans and desires that you have this year, so that you will glorify God, so you will enjoy this life. Go ahead and pray. Now, finally, let's pray on these six headlines that the Spirit of God will teach us, will teach you. Father, on these six headlines and even much more, we ask that you will teach us by your Spirit, O oh God. Teach us to understand who Jesus is and help us to understand the implications of all the names of Jesus as he has taught and has recorded in the scriptures in order for us to enjoy the abundant life. Father, God help us in all social issues. Give us the solution. Father, help us to know the daily living daily routine, daily practices, duties and services that you have for us. Almighty God, give us wisdom by your spirit to live in every situation of challenge, in all aspects of life, Father, in the spiritual, our spiritual life, our material life, our physical life, our health, everything, give us the wisdom to live. Father God, we pray, Teach us and help us to be leaders, just like our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ demonstrated. All this we ask through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you, brothers and sisters. This is where we bring the meeting to a close. But before we go, as usual, please, let's have your question. Let's have your comment. Perhaps you have a question. Perhaps you have a comment. Please go ahead. If you have a question, you have a comment, feel free to ask now. Yes, go ahead, please. Pastor, thank you so very much. It's been a wonderful day in the presence of God. You mentioned six headings, so I did not yes. get the, the, I have had Jesus, okay, Jesus addresses many issues, uh, knowing who Jesus is, social issues, then number three was what? A daily, you said something about a daily, daily living. living. Daily living as a Christian. Yes, okay. What has Jesus taught about how we live daily? For okay. example, your prayer life will come in here. Jesus woke up every day. It's written there in the Bible. Every day mm -hmm. and will go to solitary place and pray. And I know many, many Christians that till today do not have a prayer time. They pray whenever they can pray. And they want to experience the divine power. Mm -hmm. It doesn't come that way. So these things are somehow simple, but it requires diligence. It requires somebody paying attention to. So for example, Jesus at the age of 12, already knew so much in the scripture. You could say, yes, he has the spirit of God, but it's obvious that he dedicated time to study. That's why when he went for that, uh, that feast, rather it was the feast, he left the earthly parents and was in the temple, listening and asking questions and contributing. Three days, three days he was there. <laughs> So these are the things we're talking about. Daily Christian living. Because it is by the divine power. And we have to know how to harness, possess, receive, and deploy the divine power. All is in Christ Jesus. And it is by what he taught. So it is in discovering, call it the secret if you like, that is in Christ Jesus of what he has taught and doing what he said we should do. That's where it lies. Thank you for that, my sister. Please go ahead if you have another thing to add. Okay, and number four, please. Okay, I think I just go through them again then. Number one is who is Jesus? Mm -hmm. Number two is social issues. Number three is daily living as a Christian. Number four is wisdom for living wisdom for living 
So circumstances wow. of life, how do you live, survive, excel, have victory in those circumstances of life? Wisdom for living. Looking at Jesus as he managed different situations and circumstances and, and following also his advice and instruction. If you pick those, you will live. So I gave some example, relationship, circumstances of life, handling enemies, you know, building good relationship. Some Christians are solo people. They want to be solo people. That's a sad life. You cannot enjoy abundant life that way. Jesus knew how to mingle even with the uh, tax collectors. collectors. <laughs> yes, with the tax collectors. This is what we're talking about. But some people who say they are Christians, and because of that, they cut off from everything in life. In fact, some religious leaders and groups will tell you to cut off from everything in life. Okay, what we are to cut off from is sin. Cut off from sin, but let the light of God in you shine forth. So Jesus taught how to live a balanced, holistic, as we call it, rounded life. Number five is the divine power. That is the power of God, which is the demonstration or the works that Jesus did and has commanded us to do called the greater works of God, the greater works of God. Number six is the leadership model of Jesus Christ, the leadership model of Jesus Christ. And I can already tell you the leadership model of Jesus Christ. His leadership model is the servant leadership model. Is called the servant leadership model. Many management and leadership schools are teaching this model and Jesus gave it free of charge to those who follow him or the, in the Bible, the servant leadership model. So note that down and begin to explore this now as you read the scriptures. I want every one of us to form our own notes in each of these headlines from the synoptic gospels and also make reference to other scriptures to corroborate your points, write it from your own perspective, not to come and tell me, for example, uh, somebody who I would say uh, discuss uh, Luke chapter six, Luke chapter six, for example, and then somebody will come to tell me uh, Luke chapter six from verse 20. Then he lifted up his eyes toward his disciple and said, blessed are you poor for yours, for yours is the kingdom of God. And then the person will tell me, you see, Jesus said uh, the poor is blessed because they will inherit the kingdom of God. That's not true. <laughs> Jesus didn't say that the poor is blessed too. That's not what Jesus was talking about here. So you should all be paying attention to the scripture. For example, somebody will come and tell me, Jesus said, when they slap you on this side, turn the other side. So when you go on the street, somebody slaps you on this side, you turn the other side for the person to slap and say, Jesus said so. Jesus didn't say so. That's not what Jesus meant. You ask me, you say, ah, pastor, hey, hey, you're going to another level now. Yes, that's why you should study the scripture. That's why you give your life to Christ and receive the Holy Spirit so he can teach you. But let me make it simple for us. Just look at Jesus, everything Jesus taught, he demonstrated it. So you have to look at, that's why I keep telling you what Jesus said, what he did, and what he commanded us to do. That's how you understand this scripture. So now, Jesus was crucified, right? Persecuted, and then put on trial, disgraced, mocked, beaten, and all that. In fact, they struck him on the cheek as well. So you know. Did you see him turn the other cheek and say strike? No, he did not. So what was Jesus talking about then? He was saying, don't retaliate. Do not retaliate. That's what he meant. So it's not physically when they strike you this one check, turn the other one. Don't retaliate. That's the context. Anyway, so back to this. So when he faced the trial, faced all that, 
he did not retaliate. He focused on his vision and his purpose and his objective. But anytime somebody crossed his purpose and objective, he acted otherwise. So that same Jesus that said, turn the other cheek, when he came and saw them selling and buying and selling in the temple, what did he do? He took the cane and flogged them. Holy anger rose. The power that he has over mankind was exerted because nobody can actually stand his influence. You know that? So he allowed himself to be killed by ordinary mortal man whom he created, as we have read there in Hebrews chapter one. When I say whom he created, you don't misunderstand me. See there, the Bible says that God made all things through him. That's what I mean there. So you don't know, start struggling. I say, ah, I thought God created all things. Oh, you said it's Jesus. Uh -huh. And then you begin to say, ah, Jesus and God are the same, are one. I've told us that very clearly. <laughs> you have God, their father, and you have his son, Jesus Christ. But Jesus Christ proceeded out of God, out of the father. And this is the mystery of God. If you stay there, you will not make a mistake. Okay. I pause here. So let the spirit teach us, let the spirit lead you and guide you in the six headings. Then follow from the four synoptic gospels and then corroborate with all the scriptures. If you do this, you will discover the secret of enjoying abundant life. It's all in Christ Jesus and he has given them given it all to us. God bless you. Okay, this is where we end. Thank you for coming and God bless you. I look forward to the interactive session that is gonna come up next Sunday. It's gonna be interactive session. So uh, we're going to then be discussing on these uh, headings. Like I said, discuss it from your personal life point of view. Take that thing that is challenging you and then come into the scripture and look for answers. Look for what Jesus has taught and has done. And you see the spirit help you, help, will help you and you put down things that as you live and practice it, it will transform your life. The almighty God bless you brothers and sisters and bye.